Hi, hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So overnight we had uh, big increases in most global equity markets. It looks increasingly likely that China is going to have to embark on new stimulus measures uh, to prop up their stock market. And in fact, they've already been buying a huge amount of stocks there yesterday following a very big drop in uh, imports in the country. Um, and other parts of the world, you've got the fact that over in Japan, um, we had Abear come out basically say that there's not going to be that there is going to be a cut in the corporation tax across there, and uh, just their, their normal kind of VAT style tax that they've got across there. So that's quite a big deal in that part of the world. Uh, with Japan 225 was up at one point over five percent. It's come off a little bit since then, but um, that's had been a big shot in the arm for that part of the world as well. You couple onto the fact that Germany had uh, in monetary terms anyway one of the best um, imports export d- data sets in a long long time. Uh, Coming out there, which is quite surprising considering the uh, drop in imports uh, for China as well. Um, global equity markets right across the uh, right across the, the spectrum there have all been increasing quite substantially, with the Dow up over one percent already this morning, the Germany 30 up 1.7, and the FTSE up almost one and a half. So you can see there that we're just a stone's throw away from uh, crossing over that 21 period SMA uh, bullish engulfing pattern there firmly yesterday. Top end of the range today, bullish crossover on the MACD. And that's currently where we stand. So we're quite a good bit away from potential resistance at 17.034. Um, but uh, equity is rallying um, right across. So then have a quick look at the UK 100. Uh, again, bullish engulfing pattern. A very similar aspect to what we've just seen in the US 30. Apart from we're a lot, lot closer to potential resistance at 62.96. Um, we're also touching the 21 period SMA. Bullish crossover with the MACD as well. Uh, and we're just about to t- take over the tip of this candle here from Thursday the 27th, um, which was the rally that we had straight after the Chinese um, stock market crash there on Monday the 24th. So we are still in between two ranges, but we're just about quite close to challenge 6296. So then, having a quick look at the Japan 225, um, you can see that big massive increase right there. Uh, that's a hammer formation that we've got right there as well. Broke above 18306, uh, and we were above 18648 earlier on, but it's been pushed right back down. Still a little bit away from those moving averages. Got a bullish cross on the MACD there as well. So that um, that cut in uh, taxation over in. Uh, over in Japan, uh, they have talked about it. It does look like they're reiterating that they are going to do that, and that's going to be a big boost for uh, for spending in, in, that, in that part of the world. So, uh, as as helping push the Japan to be five, it's currently up three percent. Uh, for the session, uh, and it's just mildly off the session highs. So then having a look at dollar yen, uh, dollar yen one, is at 120 spot 50, uh, bouncing nicely off 119 there yesterday. Uh, an okay candle pattern yesterday, but well off the session highs. Uh, we're trying to get above the tip of this candle here, um, but we are at the top end of the range with 121 spot 87 being the next potential resistance. And again, bullish crossover in the MACD in progress, the other technicals are relatively neutral. So looking at West Texas crude, um, looks like we are beginning to oscillate around 45.85. Uh, you've got the next potential resistance around about 49.40. I'm feeling that should, the, should there be continued selling pressure, uh, $42 is the next potential support as well. Interestingly, the other technicals are neutral apart from the MACD. That's just about across the zero line, which would add a little bit of bullish momentum. So finishing up with gold uh, of, on, the, on the commodity side anyway, that golden cross on the moving averages isn't tra- isn't translating into any significant movement on gold. Uh, everybody's still talking about the FOMC in the 17th of uh, of September, uh, with some commentators still coming out there that an increase in rates should be seen as in the US should be seen as a, as a kind of a, a green light for the global economy because the Fed would only do it if they thought that the global economy could could handle the whole thing. Really, it's all about America, to be fair. It's all about what's best for America. So I'm sure there'll be all sorts of like political aspects of will they or won't they raise rates. A number of emerging market countries obviously are desperate for the US to raise rates sooner rather than later. Um, th- from looking at gold, uh, we are looking at this as a kind of a barometer as to the likelihood of that, of that rate hike happening in September or not. And uh, certainly uh, traders are, are have, have pushed this down from the highs that they had after the uh, the China stock crash, but um, they're not dragging it all the way down to the bottom of the range right here, around about uh, 1073 as of yet. So I think we're just waiting for some more macro data to come out, of which Thursday gives you your unemployment claims. Uh, there's not a huge amount out today, actually. Nothing of major significance anyway. So then finishing up with the euro dollar and GBP USD. So euro dollar drifting lower again this morning. 
Uh, so you've seen a bit of a decouple from GBP, USD and Euro dollar. Uh, so Euro dollar dropping at one spot 11 is a potential support. That also coincides with the 55 period SMA. Other technicals are relatively neutral. And then if we have a look at Sterling right there, it's had a great couple of days. Uh, but that resistance around about one spot 54.24 looks to be still in play. Uh, we weren't able to break through it last night. We're drifting a little bit this morning. Almost got a bullish cross on the MACD. But we certainly had a buying signal on the uh, RSI and the slow stochastic there anyway. But it's not translated and then even decent this morning having a look at the intraday charts it's pretty much just been flat just just below this potential level so if we can get a boost to break up higher through that um, that should work out quite well for um, GBP USD so as we mentioned there's not a huge amount of data out today on, uh, on Wednesday but on Thursday you've got Chinese CPI which we talked about a lot tomorrow no doubt the Bank of England NPC minutes um, which will be interesting for cable so do keep an eye on that and as I said you do have your um, unemployment claims in the US that's a weekly data set at 1.30 and then finishing up with uh, the weekly petroleum report at 4 p.m. UK time and that should be interesting for your West Texas crib positions. So as ever guys, keep your eye on the chart for make insights part of the going forward and join us again tomorrow to find out what happened next.